Hey guys, it's John the Quant here. We are finally ready to derive Black Scholes, which is like the most important result in all of quantitative finance. I mean, almost all of option pricing theory is based on this, and a lot of the models that use, are used in production today are really just ways that people have devised to relax the assumptions of Black Scholes. So we're going to need to know Ito's lemma. We're going to need to understand geometric Brownian motion. So if you haven't gone through everything that we've worked on up to this point, I'm going to place links to those videos in the description, and I highly recommend that you go work through them and then come back and finish this. So let's head over to the iPad and get started. All right, we're working on the iPad. We are deriving Black-Scholes equation, and as you can see right here, that is what we're aiming for. That's going to be our final product. So we're going to start with saying, uh, let the value of an option on a stock follow a function v of s of t and t. Okay, where s of t here is the asset price. And this t over here is time. So then, by Ito's lemma, we've got that dv equals the partial of v with respect to t, dt, plus the partial of v with respect to s, ds, plus one half. This is b of s of t and t squared times the second derivative of v with respect to s dt. Now this first part might seem new, but if you think about it, this just means that the function v depends on t in a non-trivial way, right? So, before, if you just set this equal to zero, then we get what we were working with before. So this is really the first time that we've been dealing with Ito's lemma when we couldn't just say that the function we were using um, its derivative strictly with respect to t ended up being zero or something close to it. But no problem, this is easy enough to work with. Let's try to get those dt's together. Let's see, we'll have the partial of v with respect to t plus one half. This will be b of s of t and t squared times the second derivative with respect to s dt plus derivative with respect to s ds. Now, um, let's remember that the asset price follows a log normal random walk. Otherwise, we can say ds equals mu s um, dt plus sigma s db, okay? So we can take this bit here and plug it in right there. We get dv is equal to the partial of v with respect to t plus one half sigma squared s squared second derivative with respect to s, close the parentheses dt, plus partial with respect to s, ds. Now, in the real world, the value of an option depends on a lot more stuff. It depends on the, the support price, s of t, of course, the volatility of the stock, which is sigma. It depends on the strike price. It depends on the interest rate on the currency that we're working with. It depends on the mean stock price, on the execution time, a whole bunch of different things. So this is a very, very simplified version, okay? Very, very simplified. 
and a lot of other ways that people have of pricing options um, are really just ways of taking more things into account. But we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to be working with this function v of s and t. Okay, so we are going to pretend that option price only depends on the current stock price and time, okay? Now, suppose we buy one option and uh, we'll short, say, delta shares of stock. All right, so now we've got a portfolio, and the value of our portfolio, big P here, is equal to the value of one option minus delta shares of stock. And it changes like this. The derivative of our portfolio is the derivative of V. Whoops, that's supposed to be a minus, not a equals minus delta ds. So if we can go ahead and plug in what we've got before for these, this one there and this one up here, then we can get that the change in our portfolio value is equal to the first derivative of v with respect to t plus one half sigma squared s squared second derivative with respect to s dt plus the first derivative with respect to s ds this is a d over here minus delta ds All right, how are you guys feeling so far? We're about a third of the way through. It's going to be all right. So this part over here is actually deterministic. OK, there's nothing random about this. It's all a function of time. And over here, this chunk is going to be the random bit. So let's rewrite this and uh, in a way where we can really work with that random part a little easier. So I'm just rewriting and what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the random bit together, factor out that ds, okay? This is the random part. But look at what's inside the random part. If we can set dvds equal to delta, then the random part will go away. And that idea is called delta hedging. Okay, this is called delta hedging. And it is an incredibly important concept, right? We use it all the time and it's really what makes Black Scholes work. Now, because DVDS also changes with time, this is constantly in motion. So actually delta hedging is impossible or at least very, very expensive to use in real life. And we'd have to rebalance constantly. So you'd be building up a whole bunch of transaction costs and we can't really do it. But we're gonna let DVDS be equal to delta for now. All right, then the change in our portfolio value is just going to be the deterministic part from before. Entirely deterministic, okay? So, 
by the no arbitrage principle, that means that the change in portfolio value has got to be the same as the risk-free rate, okay? Change in portfolio value equals the risk-free rate because there is no risk here. It's entirely deterministic. So we can write that as dp equals r times the portfolio value dt. So now we can just equate these two and get that dv dt plus one half sigma squared s squared, the second derivative of v with respect to s dt has to be equal to r big P dt. All right, how are you guys feeling? If you have any questions at this point, please put them in the comments. I promise I will come back and read them unless I just get completely overloaded, but I'll do my best, okay? So from here, we can see that these dt's are just going to kind of cancel out. So then we'll get dv dt plus 1 half sigma squared s squared and so on is equal to r. What's our portfolio value from back up here? This one. So that's v minus delta s. So if we multiply that through, dv dt plus 1 half sigma squared s squared second derivative of v with respect to s is equal to rv minus r delta s. And delta is equal to, whoop, that's the wrong thing. We already said what delta was because it's equal to the change of v with respect to s. So we can go ahead and write that in over here, rv minus r s, derivative of v with respect to s. Let's move everything to the same side, okay? Get it all on the same side. And we'll get dv dt plus 1 half sigma squared s squared, the partial of v with respect to s, sorry, the second partial, plus r s times the first derivative of v with respect to s minus r times v is equal to 0. Let me just make this look a little nicer here. And there it is. That is the Black-Scholes equation. This is the differential equation on which all option price theory is based. Go ahead and write it down, try to memorize it because it is very, very important to everything else we're going to be doing in this series. All right, but let's talk about some assumptions. The assumptions of black shoals. So number one, we've already talked about it. We used it in the derivation. Okay, the underlying asset follows a log normal random walk. Number two, the risk-free rate is known. Okay, we used that when uh, using the no arbitrage principle. Number three, there are no dividends. Okay, no dividends from the stock. Number four, delta hedging is possible, which we know it's not, and we actually do it. very important. Not only is it possible, but we already do it. Number five, there's no arbitrage. 
Now, all of these are actually nonsense. And that's the main problem with Black-Scholes and the main problem with a lot of stuff in quantitative finance is that the assumptions that we rely on don't really hold up in the real world. For example, the underlying asset follows a log normal random walk. It sounds good on paper. We talked about it, why we make that assumption in the last video. But if you actually get the, the changes and, and graph them, you'll see that it doesn't actually fit a normal distribution. All right, we're going to have way wider tails than we should have. Number two, the risk-free rate is known. We tend to um, approximate the risk-free rate using you know, short-term U.S. government bonds, but really, we're just kind of making it up. There is no such actual thing as the risk-free rate. Uh, no dividends from the stock. This one's actually becoming more true over time. Dividends, for whatever reason, have kind of, uh, I'm going to say, gone out of vogue. They're not as popular. They're not as common as they used to be. We talked about delta hedging being impossible or at least incredibly expensive. So even if we could delta hedge, we would almost certainly not actually do it. And markets are inefficient. There are arb arbitrage opportunities. Uh, they do come up. So none of these assumptions actually hold. I'll meet you back on the computer. There we go. That's Black-Scholes. Um, it's definitely the most important result in quantitative finance. If you want to work as a quant, if you want to keep going through these videos with me, you need to know it. It's worth it to just memorize it because it comes up so often and it's so important to everything else that we're going to do. So uh, if you guys were confused, I hope you left me questions in the comments. If you learned something, you can hit the like button. If you want to keep learning, go ahead and subscribe. We're going to get a ton of content coming out to you soon, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.